Hi, everyone. We're excited to host this second code along in our series for the year. And today we'll be using the Makey Makey interface, also known as the invention kit. Um, and so it's not exactly a coding tool in itself, but it does have a connection to coding. So we're still calling it a code along. And even if you don't have a Makey with you today, you can still use your keyboard to follow along. So with you today, you have myself, Craig, and Lexi and Stacy are here from Learn Quebec as well. Um, and there's support for anyone who is more advanced and would like to explore a little deeper. We could always look into a breakout room to do that. Just to explain what Learn is a little bit. So Learn is a nonprofit um, organization working for the English School Boards of Quebec. And we also fall under the RECI, you see the logo on, on the slide there. Um, the RECI stands for Network of Collaboration, Innovation and Technology. And I think that the RECI is better known in the French sector, but just so everyone knows, LEARN supports the provincial Anglophone community under that same RECI umbrella. So we're one and the same pretty much. The purpose of today, um, so a code along is little, it's a little like a reverse engineering where we start at the end to experience a tool or an interface or an application. We try to limit the preamble stuff, which typically gets addressed organically anyway, while we're playing with the device. Um, and there is a little more preamble for the Makey and more than some of the other coding applications, but we'll get through that pretty quickly today. And your job is just to follow along and make curricul curriculum connections and personal links to your class setting and your particular students. And so on our agenda today, we're going to be working at a very introductory level. We'll introduce the Makey and very, very briefly look at circuits. And then we're going to jump into two code alongs for you to follow along with. And finally, we'll wrap it up. We'll answer any questions that you have, and we'll send you off with some resources to take away. The Mickey uh, allows you to create a keyboard like buttons or keys so that you can operate your, your computer. Um, and the keys you create can be anything conductive, right? It can be a, a piece of aluminum foil or Play-Doh or a fruit uh, or a paper clip, anything like that. And what you see here is a bit of a circuit, right? So it demonstrates the simplest circuit where you're actually part of it. The, the person um, animating the thing um, is actually completing the circuit. You would hold the earth or the ground of the Makey Makey, this part right here on the board. Um, and then everything else is wired for an arrow key to function with your computer. And in, in this case, it goes to a banana but it could be, like I said, a piece of Play-Doh or anything conductive. And when you touch the banana, provided you're holding the ground, the earth, when you touch the banana, you're completing the circuit. Um, and then the corresponding key on your computer responds accordingly. So that's a pretty simple circuit um, with a person involved. And on the next slide, all I did was take the person away, right? So it's, it's still the same idea, but we created a a little switch. So this one demonst demonstrates a circuit um, where the switch is completing the circuit. And um, it makes projects a little more interactive for the users, right? Because you could push the buttons and flip the switch. So this is kind of a fun thing. So that, um, you, if you created this project, you don't have to be standing there next to the people that are enjoying it. They can just walk by and animate it themselves, pressing buttons. And people love to press buttons. Ask Angela's airplane. All right. So let me show you this. So that this whole the whole circuit idea, I want to be quick about it. So it's not a big electronics or electricity lesson. But um, like I said, the Makey is just an external keyboard and a mouse that you connect by USB. Um, the front face is more elementary, I'll call it, because there's six key options for the arrow keys, the space bar, and the click click button. And the back, if I flip this over, you can see. There's more connections on the back here for six more letters um, and mouse options also. But like I said, today's going to be really basic. So we're going to stick to the front of the Makey. We'll just do the, the six buttons that are on the front of it. Um, so let me jump over to 
the Makey Makey site, and maybe you can follow along this part. I'll try not to jump too quickly. But so if I go to makey makey.com, I believe is the site. If you want to follow along, you can do that, or you can just watch. That's all good. Um, today I went to apps. And then you see these plug and play apps right there. That's what I'm going to go into today. I'm not going to click on that one because I have the tab already open right there. There's the apps. And you can see that I think there's about 24 of them that are available for you. There's interactive posters and a lot of music stuff, some counter stuff. There's a soccer game and all that kind of stuff. So many, many options. But for today, I'm on this new piano. I'll click on play and the same thing magically. I already have a tab open. There's the piano. And can I just check for sound? I'm just pressing some arrow keys. Can you yeah, hear all good. the sound? Yeah, good. Okay. All right. So there's my piano app. It's already built for me. So let's go and connect the uh, the Makey. Um, so I'll just show you how to plug it in. Like I said, this is the Makey, the, the red wire. There is just a USB connector. You'll recognize that. Right? That's how we plug in a keyboard or a mouse. Um, I have a little dongle off my computer because my camera doesn't go all the way over to my computer, but there is my USB port for my computer. So I'll plug it in. Whoops. There you go. And you can see the lights flash. So I know the Makey is alive. It's doing its thing. Um, and it works at this point, right? So that if I press my arrow keys on the keyboard, you're hearing the piano react. Um, we talked about a circuit before myself on the earth bar. So I'm not even using the alligator clips just yet. We're just going to use this as a keyboard. So I ground myself on the earth bar. And then if I press with my other hand, the circuit will be complete, right? It'll go through my right arm, come out my left arm. And if I press the arrow key, you can hear the, the piano working. Left arrow, up, right, down, and the space bar quite simple. So we're already functional, right? We have we have this thing working. Um, take it a little bit further. And this is how you get off the computer. Literally, you can get further away. If I use my alligator clips, and I clip one into the ground area or the earth bar on the Makey. Whoops. There you go. So there's my ground. It allows me to get a little further away. So the length of this cable will determine how far away I can go. I can even put this on the floor and make a, a stepping switch or something along those lines. My ground is done. I'm gonna take this one and connect it to maybe the left arrow. Uh, let's do the up arrow. There you go, and you heard it beep. There you go. So there's my two pieces, right? The ground and the up arrow. I could touch them together and you can see it's working. I can hold the ground, like I had mentioned, and then this becomes my key for that piano key. As I touch it, you can see it playing. And I, I could go in ahead and wire the whole thing. I can do the right arrow and the left arrow and so on. I could have all my wires, and I'm not going to plug it in, but you'll get the idea. And you've all seen the, bian the banana pian piano. These would become my keys. Provided I'm grounded, I'm holding the earth connection as I press on the other ones, and the piano is played for me. And obviously, these ones are not plugged in, so they're not working, but you see how that, that works. So it's that simple. We've Hopefully, you're playing along as we go, and you're doing that as well. Um, and let me see what else I can show you. If I think I have a bit of time. I'll just show you some other projects. I'm going to share my screen. So this is something that was done in Scratch, and Lexi's going to get into more detail for that. But just to give you a sense of whatever's on my computer works with the Makey Makey, um, what I've done here is a pretty simple circuit, and pencils even work, right? The, the graphite or the, the lead in a pencil is actually conductive as well. So I could scribble as thick as I want kind of thing, put some graphite on a piece of paper, and that could become a connector like a piece of tin foil or a piece of uh, alligator clip, whatever you want to call it. So what I would do is set up this project, right? And this was an alphabet project. I just wanted to say the letter and show um, an item that represented that that letter. 
So what I would do is connect the makey makey. Remember our ground from before? I would connect it to the hand right there. And so now instead of touching the, the alligator clip, I can actually touch the hand right here to ground myself. So you can see I'm touching the graphite right there and I'm connected. I'm just gonna connect one other one. Remember we had our up arrow before. I'm going to connect that to the letter A. I'm not even sure if it corresponds to my design. It does, in fact. The up arrow, there you go. So I have one circuit that's connected. And then you get the idea we can connect the other circuits, provided we're grounded uh, right there. And so I should be able to, while I'm sharing the screen, the up arrow in my program will animate this thing in Scratch. So I'll touch the ground. I'll reach up here and touch the equivalent of the up arrow, my letter A. A, apple. Not very exciting, but you get the idea, right? I grounded myself, I touched the first circuit, I created the loop, um, the circuit, and then the animation happened on my, uh, my program attached to it. Um, so hopefully everybody's okay following along. And like I said, I can, plug all these in. And one thing I've started doing recently is when I have all my wires plugged in, it gets a bit busy and a bit um, difficult to manage as far as moving it and unplugging it and so on. So what I've done is I've made other projects leaving this wired as it is. Hopefully you can still see that. So I've made other projects, this kind of thing. And this one was for accent aigu and accent grave and accent circumflex on the letter E, just to give you a sense of there's so many curriculum connections you can have with this. So you can do languages with it. You can do storytelling. You can incorporate math, I'm sure. Um, so what I did is I made another project using this old wiring that I already have, put the project over the top of it. And remember the make is it's just an external keyboard, right? So it's gonna play whatever's on my computer. So if I go to my shared screen and change program, so I just clicked on a new tab and you can see I have a program in there with my letters and my accents. I already had something pre-programmed. So what should work is if I touch the ground again, like before, and then I touch the circuit that worked before with the ABC, it should work again in this new program with the letter E. So let's see if it works. The accent grave flesh. So you can see that pretty simple, right? And so you can have a base and keep going with different options. And I, I did a three little pig story and stuff like that. So there's so many projects and that's, um, what's really time consuming and building with your, your students, the makey itself connecting it didn't take a whole lot of time. Um, you can use existing apps and programs so you, you don't have to spend a lot of time on coding either. And then you could actually spend the time on the curriculum connections, building the project that, that goes with it. Um, so that's pretty much all I have for an intro. Um, yeah, I think I'll throw it over to Lexi and maybe she can dive deeper into um, some scratch programming. And I mean, if there's any questions in the chat, I can't see the chat in front of me, but if, if there's anything in there, if anybody wants me to elaborate, I'll do that. And otherwise we'll pass it over to Lexi. So I am going to show you kind of the next step. So what Craig showed you um, was basically how to hook up your Makey Makey and get started with those plug and play apps. Um, and I just wanted to also draw your attention to um, when we were looking at those plug and play apps, just to the right, you have also Scratch apps. Basically, these are Scratch projects that other people have created and are shared here on the site. So you can always check those out for inspiration for activities or projects that you want to do with your students or, um, you know. For fun, whatever you want to do. So for example, if I take a look at this poem generator, I can go ahead and hit play and it's going to open it up in Scratch. So I could use it as is. Um, but if you're familiar a little bit with Scratch, you know, one of the powerful things about Scratch is that you can actually go and see the code and um, you can go see it and you can also have the ability to remix it. So uh, if I just see it, I'm going to see what it looks like. Remix would make a copy of it and put it in my own um, set of files that I could go and then fix or adapt or edit. Um, but just as a quick example, when I go take a look inside, I can now see 
their code for their poem generator app that they have created. Um, but I'm going to take you through kind of uh, a way that you can create a sort of interactive uh, poster using Makey Makey. So again, thinking about um, connecting the Makey Makey to Scratch and how could we bring that into the classroom? What kind of learning could we be doing? So what's a fun activity is an interactive poster because it can be in pretty much any subject, just like you might create a poster in any subject. Well, an interactive poster is taking it up a notch. So I am going to open up this one here. I started working on one as if I was creating a poster about a trip to Peru. And um, so I'm going to show you a little bit what my project looks like. And then what I'll do is I will start a new project and we'll go together slowly and add in the blocks that we want to use. So just as an example, um, if I, I'll make this bigger so you can see, I have a background here, I have my bus, and if I were to have my Makey Makey plugged in, I could then go ahead and press those arrow keys or space bar and it's going to trigger events in my Scratch project. I currently don't have my Makey Makey plugged in, so I'm going to use my keyboard. Um, again, you don't need to use the Makey Makey today, uh, but as Craig showed you, it's fun to then bring the technology off of the computer and onto a, a physical project. But here's my project. Uh, if I press the right arrow, the van moves. And if I press the left arrow, I think it's going to change colors. And if I press the space bar, I will go to different destinations in Peru. So that is more or less what uh, my project does. So essentially, I'm going to go ahead and open up a new file. So when you are in Scratch, and you guys can go ahead and follow along and do this with me at the same time. So I believe Leanna shared the link to Scratch in the chat. You can open up the tab. And um, when you're in Scratch right now, I'm logged in. So you can see my account. You don't have to be logged in. Um, being logged in will just enable you to share uh, to save your projects. Um, but if you don't want to bother with that, that's fine for today. Or if you don't have an account, you can just go ahead and hit create. And it's going to open up a new project. Um, so here's my project page. And uh, one of the first things we're going to look at is the extensions that are available. So when I first started using Scratch and Makey Makey, we didn't have these extensions and I simply used a normal event block. So if I look in the events on the left hand side, I simply dragged in when space key pressed or when up arrow pressed or when down arrow and so on. Um, but with more recent editions of Scratch, they've created an extension for Makey Makey. So I'll just show that again. So here in the bottom left, you can add blocks to your kind of stash of blocks. So I'm going to add the Makey Makey blocks. And now I have two Mickey Mickey blocks that have been added. And so this one is basically, actually, I'll show you, it's basically the same thing. Realistically, they're both going to do the same thing. What's nice about the Mickey Mickey extension blocks is that you also have the second set here. And it, if you notice, you can take a look. There's a few different options. Um, so it's when these keys are pressed in order. So it just gives you additional possibilities when creating rather than just having it when space key pressed. It could be when left, up, right pressed in order. So you can imagine there are possibilities for how to use that. But it really, you know, if we're just doing the basics for today, you can use the extension or you can use your um, typical event block. It, it shouldn't make a difference. So one of the first things uh, we wanted to show you today, we're going to show you kind of three things. One is making something move. One is changing the looks of something. And then one is using sounds. Um, and we focused on these three because these are, you know, great things that you can use, again, for interactive posters or interactive artwork 
or those kinds of uh, activities. So to make something move, I'm just going to use my cat that's already here. Um, but if you wanted to add a new sprite, you can always do that uh, in the bottom right here, choosing a new sprite. But for now, I'm going to use my sprite that I have. I'm going to, like I said, make something move. So I'm going to come into the motion. And I'm going to go ahead and drag any one of these blocks that I want to play with. And let me just make this a little bit bigger. So essentially, right now, when I press the space bar on my keyboard, Scratch Cat will move 88 steps. If I have my Makey Makey plugged in and I have my hand grounded on the ground bar and I touch the space key or the alligator wire that's connected to the space key, it will make Scratch Cat move. So that's exactly what's going to happen. I can press it again, same thing. And so if I have my Makey Makey plugged in, I could keep pressing that space key or if the bananas plugged into the space key or the Play-Doh or the tin foil or the pencil that is basically going to make it move. Now, of course, you have other ways to make stuff move around. So you can have turns and glides and so on. So pretty simple. Next, what I'm going to do, I'm going to get rid of this move. I'm going to bring in some looks um, because one of the things I've had students do in the past, I had a, a group work on, they created a, just an, as an example, they created a map of the world that when you touched certain countries in the world, it made the flags of those countries appear. So that's where we want to get into the looks um, blocks here. So in the looks blocks, there's a, a few different things you might want to play with. But specifically, I'm going to play with right now the costume and or backdrop. These are two different ways that you can make uh, images appear. So for example, those flags, if I wanted to make flags appear or other, other items. So now I'm going to drag in my switch costume. And right now it says when space key pressed, switch costume to costume two. I can come up here and look at costumes and see what costume two is. So I have costume one and costume two. So in this case, it would make Scratch kind of look like it's moving. But if I, again, we could go ahead and add um, a different sprite. So let's say I have an apple. I'm going to do that code with that with the apple this time. So when space key pressed, switch the costume. And I'm actually going to make this apple be a green apple. So in Scratch, you can do kind of painting abilities. You can also take elements or uh, sprites that are already there and you can adapt them and change them. So all I did was uh, do that. So now I have apple, which is red and apple too. Maybe I'll call it green apple. And so when I come back to my code, I can switch to green apple. And actually, maybe I'm going to start on my red. So you see my red apple is here. And when I press the space bar or the space key on the makey makey, it's going to change to a green apple. So that is one way that you could make um, images change in Scratch. The other way is to play with your backdrop. So we have the sprites here and just to the right, we have backdrop. So that's what's going to appear in the back of your image. So similar to whoop, similar to the sprite, I can change the backdrop. And again, Scratch has a lot of different options already included in its program, but you can always upload your own if you want. So if I go back for a moment, um, when I hover over that icon, I have the ability to choose a backdrop paint a backdrop, get a random surprise of a backdrop, or upload a backdrop. So if I have an image or a photograph that I've taken, then I could use that. For today, to keep it simple, I'm going to go ahead and uh, grab, let's say, this canyon image, and it's going to appear there. Let's say that when I press the right key on the Makey Makey, I want it to appear uh, a, a different a different costume to appear. Oops, so I need to make sure I'm 
clicked on my backdrop. So just as a quick um, note to pay attention when you're coding in Scratch, the code is always attached to that item. So when I was clicked on Scratch, you can see I have the code is attached to my little Scratch cat. If I'm here on the Apple, you can see I have code for my Apple. I want to code my backdrop right now, so I need to make sure I'm clicked on my backdrop. Again, I'm going to open up my Makey Makey blocks. This time I'm going to change it for the up arrow. And I want to change backdrops. So right now I have a white one here. It's just plain. Or I have the canyon. Or maybe my project is that uh, I'm telling a story about how some adventurers went traveling from... Uh, at the canyon and they were trying to get to the beach so now I'm going to have a backdrop of the beach and if I come to my code so let's say it starts here I have my we're in the canyon scratch cat might be in the canyon and he's trying to get to the beach so when I press the whoop, let me make sure I'm still on my backdrop when I press the up arrow I want the looks to switch the backdrop to the beach. So if I go ahead and press the up arrow, it switches to the beach. And again, that could be connected to a poster or a paper or whatever it is that you've created using conductive materials to um, connect with a Makey Makey. So the final uh, element I'm gonna show you, and I think what I might do is just delete some of these here. I'll leave that one. I'll leave Scratch Cat. Uh, the final element that I'm going to show you is sound. And so another really powerful uh, element of Scratch is that we can record sound and then have that play back. So again, if you're using some kind of interactive poster or even um, sometimes projects that are common in schools are to create kind of maquettes or diagrams, then those could be attached with any kind of conductive material. So paper clips or fasteners or the pencil like Craig showed. And so in, in as an alternative to having a student stand up and present their maquette or their diagram or their poster, they could have recorded their voice into the Scratch program. And so that way, when a viewer or audience member interacts with their project, they can hear the student speak about the topic. So whether if they're talking about something for science or social studies, or whether it's just for uh, language arts, either English or French, and you just wanna hear them speak in that language for that oral competency, then uh, this is a great option. So for that, we are gonna, come into now the sounds. So we've done motion, we've done looks. We're gonna come into sound now. And um, I want to play a sound. Now, right now it's just going to play the sound meow. And I'm also gonna grab my event block. So maybe this time now it's the down arrow. When I press the down arrow, I want it to play the sound. Well, like I said, we could just use the sounds that are already there. So for example, Scratch Cat comes with Meow. The different sprites have different sounds attached to them that are usually pertinent to that sprite. But as you see, we also have the ability to record. So I can go ahead and record, and I invite you to do the same if you want. And you see it's here, the microphone is hearing me speak and I can go ahead and re hit record. Um, cats say meow. Okay, pretty simple, but hopefully you can um, extrapolate and bring this to a more advanced level for your students. Um, so it's recorded. I even have the ability to edit and cut different parts if I, if I need to. I can re-record if something went wrong. I can play and hear what it sounds like. I'm gonna do that, but I don't think you're gonna be able to hear because I'm having trouble sharing sound. Cats say meow. Cats, but basically once I've heard it, oh, you can hear it, okay. I don't know what's going on with my share sound, but anyways. Um, 
So basically, if I am happy with the sound I've recorded, then I can hit save. Right now it's listed as recording one. I would suggest that you, you know, give it a title just to make sure that you're not getting confused. What's recording one? What's recording two? What's recording three? It starts to get confusing after a while. So give your recording a title. There are ways to edit to make it faster, louder, et cetera. You have all of these options here. I think students might enjoy playing with those a little bit, maybe too much, but that's up to you. Um, and if I come back to my code now, instead of having the cat meow, well, I can replay my recording that says cat's meow. And so now in my project, if I hit the down arrow on my keyboard or using the makey makey, cats say meow, it plays that recording. So again, this is a, a place where you might bring in, um, students telling a story or you know they could be you know when I press the left arrow it's the beginning of the story when I press the up arrow it's another part of the story or so so on and so on or it could be explaining different scientific processes or it could be explaining uh, the history of World War One or whatever kind of topic you want to bring this into whatever subject you want to bring this into there are a lot of possibilities Thanks, so, Lexi. I just had an idea. What if you shared your code in the chat? I'll pull it onto my screen and I made a little switch here and we'll animate your project using the Makey Makey good. so that people can see it. So mm. let me share my my stuff. So I'll go back to my camera. There you go, my little switch. And to project, I'll click on that. There you go. Um, so this is kind of fun, too. I can go full screen or let's look inside and you can see that, right? You can see my yep. screen. You can see my switch that I've made. I'll go inside to see what it looks like. Um, and it, the right arrow is going to start a sound and move those steps. So let me try that. So over here, I have my switch. I have this idea. I took the ground and plugged it underneath this popsicle stick. Uh, and not just just the popsicle stick was already made, right? I, this didn't just happen magically. It takes time. Um, so we had the right arrow. So I'm going to take the alligator clip, move it over to the right arrow. Create my circuit. And I already ran the audio because I was touching both. I actually grounded the thing. But let me try again. It probably moved, right? So let's stop. Let me just drag the bus back. There we go. And so this is the switch I created, like I said. So there's my ground, the earth part. This is going to be my right arrow. When I touch these together, the two pieces of aluminum, hopefully you can see that, but it's just a piece of sponge and a couple of sticks, right? So as I close this together, I'm closing the circuit. And get the, the zoom sound and the bus going. So very pretty complex coding that, that Lexi was showing you. Not complex, but I mean... It, it takes some work to do the ring part, but it can simply be connected to the Makey Makey. And we said before, it's just like a plug and play keyboard because my system was already plugged in. Now that I open Lexi's project on my computer, of course, any key I touch is going to animate the project that she shared with me. So yeah, that, that was pretty cool. Thanks for doing that. Well, thank you for connecting with the Makey Makey. That's awesome. There you go. That's what we're here for today. <laughs> so that, I'll pass it over to Stacy. Maybe you yes. can you can wrap it up, and we'll see how questions go. Um, so now that you know the basics of Makey Makey, you have literally opened up the door to an endless number of ways to integrate it into your classroom. Um, I come from an elementary teaching background, and it is my favorite tool to extend what I'm already doing in my classroom to also activate my students' digital competency. Uh, so our team has worked to put together this Google Doc uh, with additional resources to support you in taking the next steps to using Makey Makey in your class. Um, so you can see on the top left, we have a link to the plug and play apps. These were some of the applications that Craig had showed us in the beginning 
I'm just going to open up the link there. Um, so you can see there's pianos, there's bongos, there's alarms. These are a great way to introduce your students to handling a microcontroller, connecting with circuits without diving deeper necessarily into the coding. Um, but we hope you do dive into the coding, which is why underneath in our document, we've also added uh, links to getting started with Scratch and Makey Makey, um, the Makey Makey Educator's Guide, and also a link to our curated list on our Digital Competency in Action website. Um, I brought that up here as well. If you haven't had a chance to look at the Digital Competency in Action website, I really encourage you to check it out. There are a ton of resources on there for Makey Makey, robotics, open creative spaces. It's like a treasure trove, I think is the word we used of resources. So check it out. It's well worth your time. Um, I'm gonna go back, hopefully not making people nauseous, uh, switching my tabs uh, to the resource document that we created. Um, but I just wanted to also highlight on the top right of the document that there are choice boards and challenge cards. These are a great way to actually use the Makey Makey with your student. We're big fans of UDL at Learn and giving choice to students. Um, so check those out. Hopefully they're helpful to you. As uh, Craig and Lexi both said, the possibilities to make curriculum connections with a Makey Makey is endless. You can use it in social science, in languages, in science, math. Um, so down below, we've given some options or activity ideas uh, that can be done with the Makey Makey across the curriculum. Uh, the name of the actual item is a hyperlink. So for example, Lexia mentioned creating a poster with Makey Makey and Scratch. If we click on the word poster, we get brought actually to the Makey Makey website where you can find instructions on how to make a Makey Makey interactive poster uh, with Scratch. Um, but maybe we could, like the posters, like she said, you can be, they can be done in many different subjects. Uh, I worked on a timeline project uh, last year. As you can see, there's a little image there of the timeline. It was great. It was coded so when students would press the year on the timeline, uh, they would have an audio recording explaining some key events that were happening, also with some little animations. So I encourage you to get creative and explore with Makey Makey and uh, Scratch.